All righty. Well, welcome back, everybody, to the, like she said, the demonstration part. Um, I'm on my phone now, so Rachel, if there is a question that comes up, if you could please let me know about that, because I really can't see anything except me and you at this point. So, Are you going to want to just take breaks for questions, or do you want me to interrupt? We can do that, because there'll be, there'll be good places for us to stop, so I'll do a couple things, and then we can take some questions, do a couple things, and go from there. Okay. So, yeah. All righty. Well, let's start at the beginning. Yes, I do my own shearing. It does take a while. Um, I am not fast. I am not skilled. I can get about two sheep done, maybe in about 45 minutes, because I am using these hand scissors. <clears throat> I am not using electric clippers. I find them to be heavy, cumbersome. I need to be near electric, which isn't always possible. They stress the sheep out, which stresses me out, which stresses the sheep out. So these are nice and quiet. Uh, I can do my shearing anywhere. I don't do shearing the traditional New Zealand method, which is where the sheep is kind of in front of the shearer and being moved around and manipulated that way. My back will not handle that. So I bought a shearing stand and I can lead the sheep onto that, tie, they have a halter on, I can tie them to the post that's on the stand and then it has a little car jack. I can pump the sheep up to the level that I need it to be. It's, it's wonderful and it saves my back a lot and lot of issues. So these are the shears that I use. And basically, if you're not familiar with shearing, shearing is just giving the sheep a haircut. Um, actually, there's a video out there of a shepherd who has a very long amount of hair, and he just uses the shears to give himself a haircut. It's rather amusing. Plus, he's Scottish or Irish, so you have the, he's saying all these things during the video. It's actually quite funny. So the shears that I use to shear them, they're self-sharpening, so they do stay very nice and sharp. I do have to clean them off every couple. For some reason, your sound just cut out, Keba. Hmm. Hey, Keba, can you hear me? Your sound just cut out. <laughs> oh, no. I wonder if she'll be able to see us. Help. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna see if I can call her phone number. Oh, hey, Kelly now, okay. I'm going to try and give her a call. Can you hear me now? Yay. Yeah, we can hear you now. Am I there now? Yep. OK. Oh, I stopped again. I don't know what's going on with that. You're oh, there. I think it might have been because somebody was trying to call me, so I had to get that out of the way. Okay. <laughs> that was me trying to call you to tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> no, we can't hear you, and I see you going like this. Well, okay, whatever. While well, we're back. Okay, I'm skirting the fleece. I'm taking the poopy bits out because nobody wants to spin with that. And then I'm left with little hay bales, vegetable matter, hopefully not burrs. The next thing after that happens, I'm kind of going through this quickly so we can keep on time, is I have this machine over here. It's called a fiber tumbler. And this has been one of the best investments I've made in my fiber business. This was locally made by Alpaca Rosa, who is in Ohio, so nice local business. You put your fleece in. There's actually plans you can build these on your own as well. I'm really not that smart. 
I'm smart in other ways, but not necessarily in building devices like this. So I bought one. It tumbles, the fleece comes out, or the, the um, vegetable matter and the debris comes out the bottom. I usually let this go for an hour or so just to make sure every, yeah, <laughs> yeah this is quite a haircut. I mean, these sheep, for as small as they are, they have a lot of wool. So let's pretend an hour has passed. Sometimes. Hey, Keba, you're cut out again. Mm -mm. No idea why this go. is happening. I am not doing anything. All right, sorry, folks. Not sure what's happening here. Hey, Keba, well, we come wouldn't mind just taking a look at me every once in a while, and if I'm waving at you like this and pointing to the ear, that's <laughs> okay. What I can do that. So we've tumbled for about an hour. We've gotten all the debris out that we can. Um, Rebecca, I might try nixing the headset. I'm actually afraid of what might happen if I do that at this point, though. <laughs> so we'll see. Oh, I should, the, the headset should be charged, but maybe it's not. So after we tumble the fleece, the next part is to wash it, to get as much dirt out as we can. Let's see if I can get it to come down here. There we go. I use Unicorn Power Scour. That's my go-to for washing. And it just broke, of course. Now, granted, I'm usually doing this with a larger amount of fleece, and I'm gonna tell you the honest truth. I don't usually wash my own fleeces anymore. I found a fantastic mill nearby. She has the setup. She is um, <clears throat> has the better way and more economical and ecologically sound way to wash. And I usually have like 11 fleeces at a time. I don't wanna wash all of that. I let her do that business. So just for as a demonstration, um, it goes in, you let it sit for a while. You don't wanna agitate the wool because that will felt it and pull it all together and you won't be able to spin with it. So after it's sat for a while, squeeze it out. Usually I'm doing these in big totes, but this is just for the demonstration. You put it in the rinse, and your kind of gross, dirty fleece comes out a lot nicer and wider. What is the name of that soap you use so I can write it in the chat? Unicorn Power Scour. And they have all sorts of things that you can use for yeah, that's the soap, Unicorn Power Scour. You can buy it at your local yarn shop. You can buy it usually at the local yarn shops. There's actually other ones too. People, some people like something called Kookaburra. Some people use, I think, Eucalan as well. But I found for my fleeces, Unicorn works the best. So we have now taken dirty fleece and made it clean. The next thing to do is to card it. There's two ways to do this. You can usually use, you can either use the hand cards or for larger amounts, you can use the drum carder. Now for the hand cards, I'll show those first. Let's see. You get the wool on one of them. Rebecca, what was the first part of your question? I see or hand pick. Do you ever use a picker before carding or a hand pick? Yes, I do have a picker. I usually don't need to use it that often because the wool is open, but some, for some of the tighter fleeces, I use the, the, the I have a um, swing picker and that opens it up a little bit. I just don't usually use that that often though. All righty, card it. I'm not good with hand cards. I'm still learning. These were actually my mom. She gave me all of her fiber stuff after she got out of spinning. And now we have something that looks a little bit more ready to spin. You can kind of pull this into roving. It's not the best, 
but it works for a small amounts if you just want to sample and test and see what your fleece is going to do, what it's going to look like. And then this would go through the spinning wheel. Now you can see there is still a little bit of vegetable matter in there, some hay, but I can either pick that out by hand or when I'm spinning it, I can pick it out that way as well or at that time. Now when I'm using larger amounts, I'll use my drum carter. This is a brother drum carter. Um, it's an investment, but I found that when I have a lamb fleece that I want to work with, it works very well to get that taken care of. What you do over on this side, this is where you put, I'll use this as an example just because I have it. You put your ready to go fleece in there, just washed and dried. Um, you turn it up a little bit. It pulls the wool through and then wraps it around this big drum. I prefer this way to make bats and roving because the um, wool is in a lot more aligned. The, the fibers are more aligned with each other instead of being crumpled every which direction. So that's the other way that you can make your roving. <clears throat> All right. Need to do a little maneuvering here, Rachel. Do we have any questions or comments? Um, yeah, we do. So I need to scroll up for a second. Okay, sure. Um, what condition is the raw fleece you sell come in? Um, well, it will not be washed. It will be sent through the drum carter, or sorry, not the drum carter. It will be sent through the... Um, <clears throat> I just totally forgot the word for this thing. <laughs> My brain's a little bit melted right at the moment. It'll be sent through the fiber tumbler. It will still have vegetable matter in it, but it shouldn't have very much. That's my the usual conditions. I try to send it out as clean as possible so that you can just get right to washing or sending it to the middle of your choice. Anything and then else? How do, yeah. So how do you dry your fleeces? Um, I usually set them out on big, um, I have, they're basically um, well, er, hardware cloth on a stand. They're actually used to dry potatoes and onions, but when I'm not doing that, I will use them to dry the, the fleeces that I wash because I need to get air on all sides so it doesn't get musty and everything can dry evenly. <clears throat> so put it out in the sunshine on a towel and turn it frequently or I put it up on the little the little onion drying stand and turn it frequently to let it dry that way. Next. And so what is the company that the first uh, spinner you showed? Uh, for the um, fiber the tumbler? tumbler? Yeah, that is, let's see. It, their website is the alpaca Rosa, R O S A dot com. Alpaca. The alpaca rosa dot com. Yes, Saskia, that's it. Thank you. And they actually do larger ones that you can mount outside. This is this is their personal model. I can fit two pounds of fleece in there, which is usually the fleece off of one sheep. <clears throat> All right, I'm not seeing any more questions at the moment. All righty. Well, let's go to the good stuff. We've got it cleaned. We've got it off the sheep. We've got all the vegetable matter off of it. Let's start spinning. <clears throat> this is actually a project I'm working on for a friend of mine. It's going to be a winter hat for her. It's Jacob with sari silk and some um, Angelina sparkly stuff in it. Spinning wheels, there are many different varieties. I prefer a double treadle one where I can have both of my feet working on it. <clears throat> and spinning is basically taking that, that nice piece of roving that you have. Oh, it's also got some bamboo in it, that's the white. And turning it into yarn. Now, a lot of people will use the singles, the one ply yarn, which is what this is. A lot of people, me included, I, singles make me a little nervous because with my spinning, I tend to spin a little bit more rustically. There might be some thicker spots, there might be some thinner spots. 
and it's not this is definitely not store-bought yarn I tell people if you want store-bought wool yarn go to a mill go to someone who does this professionally I consider myself pro-am I'm not quite a professional and I'm not quite an amateur at it I found a spinning style that works for me it's not for everyone that's for sure we all definitely have our own different styles and you caught me on a great at a great time because I'm just about finished with my second bobbin of singles. Alrighty, tie that off so it doesn't unravel. So now I have this bobbin full. I have a bobbin that of more of the same roving that I've already spun. I'm going to put both bobbins on this little lazy cake that holds them and then I'm going to ply them. I'm going to need to change the mother of all, which is this part of the spinning wheel, to my plying one. Do we have any questions while that's happening, Rachel? Someone was wondering about the name of the mill that you mentioned earlier. Oh, the mill that I send my fleeces to? I send my fleeces to America's Natural Fiber Works. It's about an hour south of me in Summerfield, Ohio. I've also used um, Von Strom Woolen Mill over in Columbus. Toya does a fantastic job. And I just happened to discover, actually, um, America's Natural Fiber Works, she is actually an alpaca farm. And yes, she does sell alpaca fleeces, roving, and yarn. So if anybody is interested in that, you can definitely check her out. It's um, America's Natural Fiber Works dot com. <clears throat> what was the one in Columbus that you said? Von Strom, V O N S T R O H M. And I believe she's also dot com. And then there's another question here. Where can I buy a used spinning wheel to see if I like it? <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, people have had success getting them off of um, Craigslist. Some spinning stores will also have used equipment for sale. Um, I will tell you that a spinning wheel is a very it's a, it's a very personal and dare I say intimate decision because you are working very closely with this with, with this machine and you want it to be comfortable. I actually bought mine in person, which I highly recommend if you can at all do so. I know at this point in time that might not be the um, most effective way to do things, but if you can go visit a yarn store or a dealer that sells the spinning wheels, I would highly recommend that. I tried about four or five different wheels at um, Young's Jersey Dairy at the wool gathering before I decided to get this one right here because the other ones, they just didn't feel right. <clears throat> so if you can try them out in person, but yeah, try Craigslist. The problem you might have with Craigslist is people selling spinning wheel looking machines. With Are you still there? Okay. I'm gonna try calling her again. Hey, come on. Uh oh, hey. Oh, wait, I hear myself. There you are. Okay, that's weird. I have an echo now. I'm not sure why. So, yeah, if you can, tr if you can try a spinning wheel in person, that's the best way to find the one that works best for you. Are you ready for the next question? Um, let me go through this real quick, and then we can go to the questions. What I'm doing now is taking the two singles and applying them to make my, the yarn that I'm actually going to use. 
and that is a long process. I will fill up this bobbin. Okay, this is really weird that it's reverbing to me. Let me try something. Well, that didn't work. All right, well, I guess I have to live with. <laughs> so that's plying, and that will get me the yarn that I'm ready to use. Okay. What questions do we have? What is the difference um, of your mother of all? My wheel only has that O E L use for both spinning and plying. I could use that. Um, this small one for both. I chose to buy the bigger one because that makes plying going a lot faster. I can fit them more on a bobbin. So yeah, you can, you can use the same bobbin for both. It doesn't make a difference. And then someone else said, you can start with a hand spindle too, a different thing, but easy to start. Absolutely, hand spindles are good. Um, there's, there's Turkish, drop, supported, top whorl, bottom whorl, many different kinds. Again, you might want to try them out on person if you can. But yeah, that's a good cheaper portable way to get into it. I don't do it very well. <laughs> I stick with the spinning wheel. And then Jean says antique wheels are cool but they often don't have enough bobbins. Mm -hmm. And that is um, true. Whoever is someone else is sharing um, different Facebook groups that have um, various people to connect with on how to get this stuff too. Oh, great. So there's some resources being posted here. Excellent. Um, so we can get those out to everybody because I'd like to see them too. I'm going to save the chat too. So um, in great. the end, we'll be able to reference it. Um, Thank you for bringing up the um, antique wheels because a lot of times you can't find parts. There are a couple people out there who do make replacement parts, but sometimes it's a, a hit or miss whether you can make, whether they can make something to fit your wheel. Yeah. And then someone else, um, Patricia Morgan commented, some fiber spinning weaving guilds also have a tool library and in normal times allow short term rentals to try out different wheels. That's a fantastic idea. Yeah, the local guild around me doesn't have that, but I know a lot of bigger cities might. So that's a good idea too, to find the local guild. I know Columbus has a very active guild and I think they do have a lending library too. Good thoughts and comments. Okay, let's wrap up the demonstration here. Just here. Eh, I don't know. So, once you have your plied yarn, I use, oh, I forgot to show you the yarn weasel down here. This is an antique I got off of Craigslist. A lady was changing her decor and I found out it actually is working yarn weasel. If you've ever heard the song Pop Goes the Weasel, the legend has it that it's based off of this piece of equipment. So if you turn it, you would be winding the yarn onto it. And once it hits a certain number, Pop goes the weasel. It's fun. <laughs> There's all sorts of, whoa. Okay, what happened there? All sorts of legends of pop. Yes, the pop does say something about the yardage. Um, this yarn weasel that I have, every pop is 80 yards. So there you go. Any other questions I missed? Nope. All righty. Once you've got it off the yard, Diesel, I 
that a lot of you never thought yard was this complicated or at this complex. I put it on the yarn swift here. Oh, well, actually, I did forget to mention that after I stain the yarn up, take it off of the yarn weasel, I will wash it again just in cool water. This is what we call the setting the twist. And that kind of pulls the fibers together and makes it ready to use. That way your yarn doesn't fall apart. Okay. Just so you know, I think your audio is coming through your device now. So the farther you are, um, the less people can hear you. I think your headset must have died. <laughs> I think it's back. Hang on just a second here. Okay, where's it coming from now? Now it's from your headset. I don't even know. This is old tech. It's junk. <laughs> what is that okay. thing called and what does it do? This thing right here is called a yarn swift and it's the way to get the yarn from a skein and then it goes, I attach the yarn to a ball winder which makes it into a ball. <clears throat> And we'll just turn it here. <clears throat> this is not the normal setup I have for this. I couldn't actually find a surface that would be appropriate. So I'm just gonna have to fake it here a little bit. Wind, wind, wind into a ball. Uh-oh. All right, we're gonna call that good. And now, you have a ball that is ready to knit with. You can pull it out of the center <laughs> and you are ready to go. Because knitting with that big long skein is not very good. It gets tangled and it gets all sorts of nasty. And once you've made it into, we call this a yarn cake. Once you've made it into a cake, you are now ready to spin knit and weave whatever, whatever thing you would like to do. And that is the super fast There we go, turn that up a little bit. And that is the super fast of how you get it from the sheep to a finished item. <clears throat> Have a couple things here. I like to make beanie hats. This is some yarn that I dyed, some of my Corydale yarn. I used to have some Corydales before I got the Shetlands. So I have that hat, and this is a shawl. I call this the Shetland Rainbow. This is, um, I think, seven or eight colors of Shetland wool that I wove on my triangle loom and then attached the fringe to it. So this is a very soft. Wow. Yeah. And that's what you do with Shetland wool. <laughs> Okay. Wow, that was a whirlwind. I know I didn't get to cover everything that everybody wants to know and we could talk for days about worsted and woolen and the different fleece types. Um, I'm going to try to switch back over to my computer. Wow, like I said, that was a whirlwind. Oh, thank you so much for your kind comments. Um, I love making, I love knitting. I like, I like the whole process going from shearing the sheep to making that finished product. Um, yeah, Rebecca, you got to roll with this tech stuff. <laughs> if you don't, you're just going to make yourself crazy. Um, I wish you could have all come to the farm and I hope one day that we can do that. Even those of you that are in different states, if you could join us again on a Zoom. Um, um, let's see, I hope I haven't missed any questions here. Um, ba, 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 ba. Yeah, oh yeah, good point. There are a ton of fiber equipment Facebook groups and those are usually pretty on the up and up. Um, men and women who are changing equipment and you can get some, get some stuff for some really good prices too. So that's good. Let's see, what else do we have here? I appreciate having you everybody here. Honestly, I am always 
happy to talk and to answer questions. So if you have something that you'd like to have me talk about or to answer any questions, please feel free to get a hold of me. Um, let's see, my email should be around on that page somewhere or I don't know where my email is. Let me type my email in here. On the stillwater at gmail.com. I would be happy to answer your questions, help you out getting equipment, talking sheep, whatever it is. Um, Karen, as far as the pottery, it will be on the website. It's not going to be for a couple months. I need to make sure, number one, my kiln still works, and then I need to actually make some stuff. So that'll happen once the weather gets cooler. I do make yarn jars. I make um, all sorts of different stuff for the... Am, can you hear me? Okay. <laughs> okay. So I make all sorts of different stuff for, for um, using yarn. All right. Oh, I do see one more question. Um, do any of my Shetlands rue? Unfortunately, no, they don't. I'm hoping to get some that do rue, and that's where you can just kind of peel the wool off of them. But for the time being, all my Shetlands have to be sheared. So we'll see what happens with, with some of the new ones. If you have any other questions, please feel free to drop me an email. I'd be happy to talk with you. And thanks, everybody, for attending. Thanks to Rachel and Community Solutions for setting all of this up. This is fantastic. And make beautiful things, people. Make yourselves happy and make some other people happy with it. Thank you.